by the GS, by the convener of GCK, that power you also will manifest in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. In Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth things which he now see and hear. He's gone up to heaven and healing continues. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the, tell me, tell me, the apostles in the plural, power, the same power in Peter, that same power in Philip, that same power in Stephen, that same power in all the other apostles, that's biblical. Our church will be like that. Power in your life. Power in your mouth. Power in your prayer. In Jesus' name. Acts chapter 3 verse 2. In Acts chapter 3 from verse 2, it says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. To ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arms. Verse 4. In verse 4, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us they had something to give you will have something to give the lord will give it to you it will work in your body then it will work in your family Amen. then it will work in your community and everywhere you go it will work in jesus name I have the power. Say it from your heart. Say it convincingly. When you see somebody sick around you, the first thing is not, let's go to the pastor. You have the pastor there. The Lord will walk through you in Jesus' name. Look on us. Not just look on me. Look on us. The same power in Peter, that same power in John. The same power in William, that same power in, what's your name? What's your name? Mention your name. That same power will work in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And when I pray, you must expect to receive something of me. You will receive. You didn't come here in vain, and you will not return home in vain. You will receive in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, then Peter said, Silver and gold 
abide not. But well, thank God today, the church, we're serious now, cannot say silver and gold, we have none. Look at all this offering we're collecting. This church has silver and gold. I learned of a preacher somewhere for having their church service. And he said, now, we're going to collect offering. If you have 10,000 naira, raise up your hand. 20,000, raise up your hand. 50,000, raise up your hand. And they were faithful. They raised up their hands. 10,000, I can give. 20,000, I can give. 50,000, I can give. They said, okay, raise up your hand. They raised up their hands. They stood up. They said, now, that 10,000, that 20,000, that 50,000, go and give to the poor in your community. Ah, I lost my audience. Praise the Lord. All the offering is not just church. There are poor people around. There are unemployed people around. There are indigent people around. But we must build our campground. DL, 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 ICC. I understand. We must build. We're going to build. But while you're building, your neighbors are dying. Your neighbors who do not have anything to feed themselves. And your fellow brother, your fellow sister has nothing to send children to school. We'll build the L ICC, Deeper Life International Conference Center, but will not throw our hands up in the air. All the offering we can give, we've given to DLICC building, and we can now be at ease and allow our members to die of hunger and to be so discouraged because they have nothing. And we have the money. And what if this church, like we used to do in the olden days, good old days, that we reserve an amount of money aside for charity. That we'll say, as we're giving, we allocate this amount to the building of DLICC. We allocate this amount to building the district church. The district church we're building, and we're not building for people. The people we're building for, they're dying of hunger, malnutrition, starvation. Let's budget. End of the year. We're coming to the new year. Let's budget part of the money. Millions. Millions of our currency to take care of the people in part, which one comes first. Let's say your house is leaking and you have your mother dying. How will you spend? Will you first mend the leaky roof or take care of your mother? Which one will you do first? We should give priority to members of our church, even those who are not members, and we know them, and we can contact them. Silver and gold, now we have silver and gold. <laughs> you know, and sometimes even myself, we travel around, and as we travel around, you know, some of the governors and some of the people, they appreciate what is happening. They say, Pastor, 
we know you always give everything to the church this one we're giving you directly and so i cannot say honestly silver and gold i have none i have some and i'm not going to give everything to the building of DLICC. I'm looking for those who are hungry. I'm looking for those who are dying. I'm looking for those who are impoverished in their lives. And some of the money will go to them. If you know them, tell your coordinator. Tell your group pastor. Tell the people so that we will not be guilty of giving all the money to a building that will not be raptured when Christ comes. Christ is coming to rapture the church and to rapture the people. Take care of the people. Somebody shout, Amen! Silver and gold have I none, Peter said, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You receive strength in Jesus' name. In verse 8, verse 8 says, And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping. I'm praising God. It will heal you. It will deliver you. It will set you free. And what heaven has, the healing, the deliverance, the miracle, the signs, the wonders, you'll enjoy from today and for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 15 mark 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Any believers here? I said any believers here? These signs will follow you because you believe. In my name... They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18. And if they drink, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt you. They shall lay their hands on the sea. And they shall recover and I will recover verse 19 so then after the Lord had spoken unto them after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and such on the right hand of God, Emmanuel's ascension. Verse 20. And in verse 20, 
and they went forth and preached everywhere, preached everywhere in their own city, preached everywhere in their own country, preached everywhere. And now in our continent and in all continents, and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Say that again. Shout that again. This power of the risen Christ will walk through you as well. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. There's healing divine. There's healing definite. There's healing desired, desirable for you, for your family. For your community, for your church, the local church. For everyone, the signs shall follow them that believe. All you have to do is believe the power. Has not changed all power given unto Christ in heaven and on earth. And if Christ resides, abides in you, he abides with you in that power. He loves you. He take care your needs, he heals, and he will heal you. But after you are healed for strength, you need food, you need shelter, you need clothing, you need wherewithal, you take care of your life. And if you belong to the church, you have leaders in the church. Healing is not enough. Healing by prayer. But now we need what to eat. If you are working, praise the Lord. If you are employed, praise the Lord. If you can fend for yourself, praise the Lord. But if you cannot provide for yourself out of no fault of yours, the church will belong to. After the Lord has miraculously healed us, the church should look at us and see what we can do. So you remain alive. And the church should not give any excuse for spent all the collection, all the offering, all the money on building the campground, building the conference center. We spent all the money building the local church building. The people who worship in that building, they also need care. Feed the poor. Clothe the naked. Care for the widows. Care for the fatherless. That's what the Lord has given us to do. I want you to balance off everything. And the Lord will help you.
In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. Say, the Lord has answered my prayer. You will not die prematurely. You will live a healthy life. Long life. Mighty purpose for life. And any sickness that came, came to the wrong place. It was not looking for you. That sickness was blind and then came to your house. Sickness come out in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that your healing plan is for everyone, everyone in your church. Lord, stretch forth your hand, heal your people in Jesus' name. Any form of sickness, long-standing sickness, terminal sickness, at this time, at this hour, touch your people, heal your people, Deliver your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as you heal your people and you make us and you keep us healthy. All the other things we need, clothing, food, shelter, care, provide in Jesus' name. And use us. Lord, use me to provide for the needs of people around me in Jesus' name. This period was celebrating Jesus, Emmanuel, the great giver. Lord, Give us the nature of Christ. If we need to buy bags of beans, bags of rice, bags of gari, bags of potato, bags of tomato, bags of edible things, help us, Lord, that to celebrate celebrating Christ will buy and then in our churches distribution. Give a better amen. Lord, take care of your people. Lord, let the church, this church, become balanced that we are not only having money for building, we are having money for building lives, building families, building the widows, building the widows, building the orphans, and building the people of God. Nobody shall have so much to eat that we are eating too much and the others have not a single meal for every day. Lord, distribute the manna everywhere. And let the goodness of the Lord be available everywhere for everyone, even strangers. At this time of celebrating Christ, help us, Lord, to have such generosity that will touch the lives of strangers around us in Jesus' name. Bless your people. For so much will have to give to other people. Healing, yes, for everyone. Health, yes, for everyone. Deliverance, Yes, for everyone. Dominion, yes, for everyone. Happiness 
and joy and long life for everyone my brother for you my sister for you my boy my daughter there for you lord spread the happiness everywhere in jesus name we pray amen we bless the name of the lord for uh, the message and uh, this message it's a message that bless the body soul and spirit right and as you've heard uh, please i want us to begin to think to ourselves in what way can i be a blessing before the end of this year to somebody uh, in what way can i be a blessing to somebody in the church uh, you know, I want to encourage us to start with our ministers in what way can I be a blessing to my location pastor right um, I know in our church we don't talk a lot about um, supporting our leaders financially with gifts um, I believe that they they know that we appreciate them and at this time you're giving they know it's not uh, a bribe or to blind their eyes you know but we we want to show our leaders that we appreciate them so i want to encourage us that as you're thinking of putting this word that we've heard into action think of a way to be a blessing to somebody before the end of this year uh, i'm emphasizing again <laughs> let's 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 begin with our leaders let's begin with uh, if you're thinking of people in the church uh, people around you um, you may think you know they have it all uh, you know they are, they are working they are blessed but you'll be surprised what um, the little gifts that you show to them the little appreciation will go a long way in, in, in um, strengthening them and also you, know, you want to look around you if you to so going out um, have this at the back of your mind and God in his own way will lead people to you that you can be a blessing to and as god is laying it in your heart to do something for for somebody um don't don't hesitate don't hesitate let's give as as god has blessed you um it may you know it does not have to be something big right uh, but just do it from the depth of your heart just in in, in honor and in obedience to, to what you've had today um, and i pray that as we do so that the lord god of heaven will will bless us and he will multiply all that he has given unto us for his glory in jesus name uh, and uh <laughs> if let you permit me if you don't know of how to be a blessing if you if nothing is coming to your mind uh the the singles program is coming next year i know uh uh region of Asia, uh, has been a source of blessing to the young adult ministry and you know you can even though the church locations are responsible for it but well we're still trusting god for more blessings so you can bless the young adult ministry uh, also the youth ministry right the uh, youth fest is coming next year um you know registration fee alone it's not always enough to cover everything just be a blessing to the ministry uh, be a blessing to people around you be a blessing to to strangers right um and i pray that god will continue to bless us as we obey and as we do his will in jesus name um so the next message will will be uh we'll be listening to our region of us here just want to um be sure that uh so just just a minute just to check so while we wait uh can continue to meditate on what uh, you've heard uh, and continue to ponder on those words and think about it um, that as God has blessed you as God has been uh, has been a source of blessing to you how can you be a source of blessing to other people and now we're not talking about buildings we're not talking about 
uh, anything that has to do with, you know, giving to the church. We're talking about being a blessing to people around us, being a blessing to to even strangers, people that we don't even know, right? Um, continue to think on, on those things and continue to uh, ponder on them and uh, God will continue to lead people your way even before the end of this year that you can be a blessing to um, and I pray that as you do so more blessings will come your way and my way in Jesus name Uh, at this time, we're going to we're going to pray. We're going to commit to the message that we're listening uh, into the hands of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, shall we, Reverend Michael, can you just uh, take first before I start ministering? All right. Yeah. All right, we're going to take the hints. Uh, tell the whole wild world. Tell the whole wide world of Jesus, bear the news from shore to shore, telling sinners of uh, salvation, of Savior, let the light spread more and more. While we pray for all the nations, send them help with willing hand. Let us not forget the home here, Jesus for our native land. Tell the, tell the world, tell the whole wild world, bear the news from shore to shore, tell the whole wild world. Of Jesus. Praise his name forevermore. We'll listen to the hymns and then we'll sing along. The media team can help us with the the sound.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Let us pray. Recording Precious Father, in progress. we thank you and bless you because of your faithfulness. We thank you because of your goodness. Your goodness. Thank you for your power and for your might. Thank you for your divine enablement in our lives. Thank you for the call of God. Thank you for the grace of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God upon us. Lord, we thank you for the ongoing retreat and the crusade. And we appreciate you for the showers of blessings you have been pouring upon us since we started. Thank you for the vessels you have used, you are using, and you still will use. Speak to us now. Bless us through the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we bless the Lord for all that God has been doing in us and through us uh, since the uh, crusade and the retreat started. At this moment, we are looking at the subject on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And the topic is, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? My text is taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 2. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto, unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his sons upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they speak with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. Praise the Lord. The church today is confronted with many dilemmas. We are confronted with the dilemma of ignorance on the subject and the power of the Holy Spirit. We are confronted with the dilemma of ministering without the power and the endowment of the Holy Spirit thereby making the work of God ineffective. We are confronted with the dilemma of using the worldly wisdom and antics in to do the work of the Lord, thereby canonizing spirituality. And then finally, we have the dilemma of using an evil spirit to minister to God's people. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. How do we decode and recognize the difference between all this? The Bible says that by their fruits, we shall know them. Matthew chapter 7, verses 16 to 20. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of tongues, of figs, of teachers? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Paul is very clear in his explanation, and so is Christ Jesus very clear in his explanation on the subject of the Holy Spirit. The question comes to you and to me today. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? As a preacher, as a teacher, as a minister, as a children worker, as a Sunday school teacher, as a, as a singer in the church, whatever you do in the church, even as an usher, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Now pay attention here, even if you're not a worker, this is for believers. Paul was not asking what kind of work they do in the church. He said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? I pray that the Lord will give you understanding of this in Jesus' name. Now, I have some questions for us. The first one is, who or what is the Holy Spirit about? 
What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Who can receive the Holy Spirit? How can we receive the Holy Spirit? What are the evidences of being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Very quickly, let me look at them. What or who is the Holy Spirit? Now, the Holy Spirit is a personality. Is a third person in the Godhead. He is God himself. John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 says, For there are three that bears record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about a godly personality, the top person in the Godhead. It is not something like a chair, like a wood, like a stone. No, it is something that is alive. A person, a personality. What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? In a nutshell, to guide us, to empower us, to equip us, to aid us in obeying the word of God and the work of the ministry, to help us to discern, to help us to evangelize, to comfort us in times of trouble and challenges of life, to teach us the things of the Spirit, the things of God, to strengthen us when we are weak, and to give us the necessary support in doing what God has com uh, committed to our hands to do, to convict and to convert sinners. The work of the Holy Spirit is to make easy for us the work of the ministry and um, to enjoy our Christian life. Who can receive the Holy Spirit? Every believer. You and I. And so if you are here today, you are born again. You are free from sin. You are washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you are not yet filled with the Holy Ghost. Before you live today, it can happen. If you believe, it will happen in Jesus' name. Just about two months ago, I was in Nigeria. And I met with somebody who reminded me of how she got filled with the Holy Ghost. Just ministering like this as I'm ministering today. During a retreat, I minister on the same subject, and people by the grace of God, and she happened to be one of them, received the power of the Holy Ghost. And that was even before I left Nigeria. And if many years back, maybe 30, over 30 years ago, that's happened, it will happen again in Jesus' name. Here in Washington, D.C., it has happened also. We just thought like this on the Holy Ghost. It has happened a number of times. And after the teaching, we prayed. And people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And I am telling you, if only you believe, it will happen again in Jesus' name. Amen. How can we receive the Holy Spirit? I will touch on that momentarily when I get into the body of the message. And then, what are the evidences of being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Of course, there's going to be an initial evidence of speaking in a new tongue that was not previously known or learned. Not that alone. The work of the ministry we do, the way we do the work, the results of the work will also be proofs and evidences of the Holy Spirit. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And look at it from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Again, tonight, wherever you may be, whether with your family, whether alone by yourself, the Spirit of the Lord is coming to you. I'm filling you up in Jesus' name. Verse 3, and they appeared unto them, cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all this we speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we are born? I'm telling you, the power of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you in Jesus' name. Final question. Are there fake Holy Spirit? Are there false or counterfeit Holy Spirit? Yes. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, that 
Be not be marveled, be not marveled, for Satan himself is transformed into an agent, angel of lies. So we need to be careful of what we do, where we go, and how we go about getting this Holy Spirit. There are all kinds of fake, false, satanic, demonic spirit out there. They are spirits. They speak in tongues, but they are not the Holy Spirit. It's going to be either the Holy Spirit or an evil spirit. May you not receive an evil spirit upon your life in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 8. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power. I need an amen right there. I said I need an amen right there. Amen. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Spirit and the power of the Lord will come upon you and you will be an ambassador of Christ anywhere and everywhere you go in Jesus' name. The very last works of the Lord Jesus Christ unto his disciples and to the church was the fact that we shall receive power. And we will receive it in Jesus' name. I quickly talk on three points. Number one, the risk of ministering without the Holy Spirit. The risk, the danger, the tragedy of ministering without the Holy Spirit. Point number two, the repercussion of receiving the Holy Spirit. The consequences or repercussion of receiving the Holy Spirit. Point number three, the prerequisites for receiving the Holy Spirit. Let's come quickly to point number one, the risk of ministering without the Holy Spirit. It can be very, very dangerous and disastrous for anybody, any minister, to go about ministering without the power of the Holy Spirit. And please understand, when you give your life to Christ, you have a measure of the Holy Spirit in you, uh, but then at the point of baptism, you have the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life. Understand the work of the ministry. You are dealing with principalities and powers, invisible forces, uh, and you don't know the onslaught of the wicked one. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the power of the Lord to aid you, to help you, to counter them because the Spirit of God of the Lord is a spirit and is able to see to the realm of the Spirit to deal with the forces and the powers of darkness that they want to confront you or attack you. May you be victorious over them. May I be victorious over them every day of our lives in Jesus' name. John chapter 16, verses 7 to 13. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father. Ye shall see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Verses 6 and 7, Zechariah, chapter 4, I read from verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who art thou? O great mountain before Zerubbabel, thou shalt come, become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shoutings, crying, grace grace unto it i pray the power of the living god will come upon you it will come upon me and we will accomplish purpose and destiny in life in jesus name our labor will not be in vain the forces and powers of darkness will not be able to hinder us 
from accomplishing Amen. the purpose of God for our lives in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, verses 9 to 13. Acts, chapter 8. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. He had an evil spirit that he was using. He was giving out, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is a great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with such things. But when they believed, they fell like preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. And the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. You see there, there are people out there with evil power. Now pay attention. Simon was not in the church. But this time and age, there are a lot of sorcerers in the church. They call upon the name of the Lord, but not in the right spirit. Not with the right spirit. They sing with you. They sit with you. They eat with you. Be very careful. They are agents of darkness. May the Lord deliver us from them all in Jesus' name. Amen. The work of the ministry can be very challenging. Getting into the ministry without a part of the Holy Ghost can be disastrous. Both to the minister and to them that are being ministered unto. You have seen the case of Simon the Sostra. What happens if we begin to minister without a part of the Holy Ghost? Number one, we can become incapacitated. That is, we are paralyzed, we are weakened, we are disabled. Number two, we become ineffective. We are fruit, fruitless, we are frustrated, and we end up in failure. Number three, we become incapable or incompetent, incompetency. Number four, we become impotent. That means we are powerless. The forces and the powers of darkness will turn us to football, kicking us here and there. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there you see, we need the Holy Ghost. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickened the flesh, uh, that quickened the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you become powerless, you become impotent, and you become you can become a victim to the forces and powers of darkness, or darkness, number five. We become inconsequential. That is, we become insignificant in life and in ministry. So if you have been struggling and struggling with just head knowledge, you need the Holy Spirit for the work of God in your life to move forward and for you to become significant. Number six, we become insensitive to the move of God, to the word of God, to discernment from God. Number seven, we become impoverished. We are poor spiritually. Uh, look at yourself. You've been struggling and struggling. You need the Holy Ghost. Don't just say to, if you have somebody around you, just tell the person, you need the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And then you say to yourself, point to yourself and say, you need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We all need the Holy Ghost. If you were baptized before and you have not the experience, you can get it back again even tonight in Jesus' name. Yes. There is going to be... Uh, a spiritual imp uh, impoverishment, bankruptcy. You are poor. You are deprived of the necessities of spirituality. You are disadvantaged from accomplishing all that God has ordained for you to accomplish. And then you become incommunicable. God cannot communicate with you. You cannot communicate with God. Just like Saul of old, uh, may that not be our portion in Jesus' name. When mm -hmm. you have not the Holy Ghost, you become irresponsible. You become irrational. You become insubord you, you, you begin to be insubordinating. Uh, there is insubordination uh, to, to your leader. 
to God, to the word of God. And not that alone, finally, you are inconsistent in your walk with the Lord. I get to the second point, the repercussion of receiving the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Ghost, what happened? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Uh, please read that on your own, but from them, you will see the disciples, they were together in one accord. And while they were there praying and waiting on the Lord and tarrying according to the instruction of Christ Jesus, the power came upon them. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Look at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them all trans, all trans, and mark it. Everyone that was there got filled. If you are under the sound of my teaching today, I declare, I command in Jesus' name, be filled in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 31 to 33. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Hallelujah. There is going to be another shaking tonight. In your room, in your living room, in your office where you are, in the church where you are, there is going to be a shaking in Jesus' name. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake, with the, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Now you see, boldness comes upon them after the Holy Ghost came. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart. There is unity, one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. There was welfare, there was sharing, there was, there was caring, not only sharing, there was caring, there was sharing. But they had all things common. Nobody was arrogant or proud and say, I am richer than you. You are poorer than me. No, there was nothing like that. And verse 33, and with great power. Somebody say great power. Somebody say great power. One more time. Somebody say great power. The great power is coming to our churches, to our pastors, to our ministers, in Jesus' name. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And the church say, Amen. Amen. And amen. When the Holy Ghost comes, what are the repercussions? There will be conversion of souls. There will be commitment of the saints to the things of the Lord. There will be creative miracle signs and wonders. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see your pastor laying hands on people. You see people falling under the anointing. You will see the blind saint, the lame walking. You will see the barren people having their children. Creative miracle signs and wonders. Uh, blind eyes will begin to receive their sight in the name of Jesus. The deaf will begin to hear. The dumb will begin to speak in the name of the Lord. Impossibilities become possible when the power of the the Holy Ghost is at work, uh, and then there will be conventional innovation. Innovation. You see things happening in a supernatural way. God bringing people to your way. God bringing people to the church in the different areas of departments. You see people doing things in, 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 a, in a way that, and a fashion that we never saw it before. And our church begin to come alive. Number five, there is going to be congregational anointing. And I, I love that term congregational anointing. You see, the Bible says that they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Congregational anointing. The men were filled. The women were filled. The pastor filled. The members of the church filled. Look at it. Look at it. The Bible talks about John. When he was in the womb, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the father was filled with the Holy Ghost. The mother was filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray that in all our homes and families, we all shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even in all our churches in Jesus' name. And then there will be comprehensive renewal and revival. People will be hearing about our church and churches, and from far and near, they will be coming in Jesus' name. That is what happened in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Finally, there will be commendable growth and development of the church, both physically and spiritually. I get to the third point. Requirements for receiving the Holy Spirit. Requirements for receiving the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 11. I look at it from verse 9. Luke chapter 11, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask and shall be given you. 
Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. I need an amen there. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he, or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye them being evil, sinful, carnal, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Tonight, everyone that will ask, that will seek, that will knock, they will receive in Jesus' name. Amen. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts 1a. And ye shall be my witnesses. <laughs> On your job, you'll be the witness of Christ. Amen. In your neighborhood, you'll be the witness of Christ. Amen. In your family, you'll be the witness of Christ. Amen. Everywhere you go, even in your church, you'll be the witness of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. And ye shall be my witnesses uh, unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Luke 24, 19, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. From on high. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 5, verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so it's also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him that obey him when we make up our mind to receive the holy spirit what are the conditions what are the real uh, the, the the prerequisite number one realize your need of the holy ghost if you don't know you need him even when you get him you will not be able to make a proper use. Mm -hmm. Anything we don't value, there's going to be misuse and there's going to be an abuse. And that is the reason why, why some of you that got the Holy Ghost before, you have lost the experience. But here the word of the Lord is coming back again. Amen. And you will use that power for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Realize your need of him. Rely on the promises of God request for that experience by faith travel for it travel for it remain faithful and that patiently remain faithfully patient until you get it the bible puts it and say tarry you tarry in faith you tarry in obedience you tarry in expectation you tarry in hunger you tarry in task you tarry in your determination until you are filled and you'll be filled. Amen. Number five, refuse and reject any shortcut. There are people wanting shortcut. And you go to Rumpo to lay hands on you and they download evil spirit upon you. I tell you, and I lie not, I met with somebody that a pastor lay hands upon and downloaded the spirit of Python into him. Be careful of where you go. And some of you that are going from church to church, from preacher to preacher, from prophet to prophet, from priest to priest, be very careful. They will download something into your life. No wonder we have a lot of people in our churches today. Their lives are no more the same. They are disobedient. They are uncomfortable. They are discontented with everything going on. Their eyes are always out there. They are jumping from prayer house to prayer house. If God is your God, if the veil of the temple has been, has, has been torn apart and you have access to, to the throne of grace, what are you looking for? You can talk to that God yourself. If you are not a bastard child, a bastard daughter, a bastard son, things are changing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So refuse and reject any and every short call. Receive the promise of the Father. That's number six. Receive the promise of the Father. Number seven, remain committed to the fellowship of the saints. Remain committed to the fellowship of the saints. I ask you today, have you received the Holy Ghost since you 
believe. Press upon your feet and let us pray. Mm. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Mm. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Mm. Since you believe. Mm. Since you believe. Mm. Since Call upon the name of the Lord. Mm. The Bible says, He that asketh to receive it. He that seeketh findeth. He that knocketh on him it shall be open. I need thee, oh I need thee. Every I need thee. Oh God, I need thee. I need thee. Oh bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee, tell the Lord. I need I, I have no I need power of my own. I, need I have no I need power of my oh, own. Yeah. I need Holy Spirit, I, need I am begging you, help me. I, I have no I power of my I own. I need you. Tell the Lord to fear you. Fear me, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Test me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Tell the Lord to fear you. Tell the Lord to fear you. Yes, tell the Lord to fear you. Fear me, Lord. Lord. Fear me, Lord. Fear you me. don't receive it by keeping quiet. You have to open your mouth and speak. You have to open your mouth and talk. You have to open your mouth and ask. You have to release yourself. Release your tongue. And let the Lord God fill you up. This, this is my... This is... Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Oh, no. This... Tell him. Fill me up. This... Till I'm overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Tell the Lord to fill you up. Fill me up, Lord. With the power of the Holy Spirit. I release my soul. I release my life. I release my body unto you. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Remove from me every hindrance, every obstacle, every limitation. Lord, take them out of my life. Remove everything. Give me a new tongue, Lord. Yes, you said I will receive the power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming for me. I need the power right now, Lord. The power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of the Lord. Come upon your people. Fill up your people. Fill your church. Saturate your church. And give us with power from on high. Give us for the glory of your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Burn the chakos. Burn the fetters. Oh Lord, oh God, oh God. Help us to burn for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for tonight. We thank you for the infilling of your spirit, the revival of your church, the renewal of your people, the purpose of your calling upon our life. Father, we declare to you today that without you we are weak, without you we are nothing, without you we can do nothing. And so we need you. We need a comforter. We need a teacher. We need a guide. We need a helper. Oh, Lord, oh, God, send him to us now in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that no more shall we labor with the arm of the flesh, but by the power of the Lord, with the strength of the Lord, we will mount up with wings as ego, and we will go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory, to glory 
in the name of Jesus. No more limitation for me, for my brothers, for my sisters, for our children, for our parents, in the name of Jesus. We are going to accomplish purpose and fulfill destiny. Build our churches. Bless our ministers. Bless all our workers. Bless all our members and cause us to flow in the fullness of the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Recording stopped. Amen. 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 I pray that as we continue, that this power of the Holy Ghost will be seen in our lives, in our ministry, and it will be in working us in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue, we're going to quickly uh, listen to the to the guest minister, and after that, we'll go to the last message for tonight. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for this wonderful day, day, the day of the Lord, fourth day of the crusade with Pastor Dr. W. F. Cohen. We thank the Lord for how great and mighty things the Lord has already done in the lives of many. Lives have been transformed. Uh, the, the, the sick have been healed. And uh, we've seen great and mighty miracles the Lord has done unto the lives of many. Today again is another day where in uh, Emmanuel, God together with us is going to demonstrate his power among his people here again today. But before we get into that word of, of the Lord that is going to answer us in to this, I have this uh, opportunity to uh, bring unto you our guest music artist this time around call his to come and take us in a session of praise and worship before the man of God comes and ministers unto us the word of God. God bless you and thank you very much. We welcome to day four of the Global Crusade with Pastor Kumuyi. Our theme for this month is Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Uh, we want to thank Pastor Kumuyi for bringing me out. My name is Cole Hasty. It is my honor to be with you guys and to lead us in worship. Hey, if you're able, stand and join us and let's sing together uh, about the goodness of God and how great God is. Sing, you give life. You give life, you are love. You bring light to darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. And you give life, you are love. And you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. Come on, we all sing together. Because it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out praise is your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only and great are you Lord and great are you Lord we sing you give life and you give life you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord, it's your breath, and it's your breath, and I so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, 
take it to breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise into breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. sing all the earth and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great are you Lord one more time and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great to breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. His bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. His bones will sing. In great. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. And great are you. fall short I've got nothing new and how could I express all my gratitude and I could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do and so i throw my hands and praise you again and again because all that i have is a hallelujah hallelujah and i know it's not much i've nothing else fit for a king Except for heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, 
I will worship you. Sing that again. And I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. And so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get a band, praise the Lord. And come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get a band. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. And so I throw in my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a high I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, like a river overflowing in me. Christ, my Lord, the Savior, overflowing in me. I'm saying thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Jesus. You set me free in Christ my Savior. You rescued me. So you take this life and take this life delivered of so love your love holy now devoted to see your kingdom come we give thanks and thank you Jesus you set me free In Christ my Savior, you rescued me. Sing, you've given me life. And you've given me life. You've opened my eyes. And I love you, Lord. And I love you. You've answered my heart. You set me apart. I love you, Lord, and I love you, Lord. You've given me life. You've opened my eyes. I love you, Lord, and I love you, Lord. You've answered my heart. Set me apart. I love you, 
So thank you, Jesus. You set me free. In Christ, my Savior, you rescued. to sing a song in Yoruba. Baba, say oh Baba, say oh Baba, mo I do it, Baba, 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 say oh Baba, say oh Baba, mo I do it, Baba, Baba, Baba. Baba, she oh Baba, she oh Baba, mo I do it Baba, 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 she oh Baba, she oh Baba, mo I do be Baba. Amen. Right. Um, we'll be going to listen to the last message for tonight. And I want us to prepare our hearts to receive the best from God as the message comes out. Father, a mentor, yes, an inspirer. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Everything he has said is of the glory of God and for your blessing. Tonight, blessing. Tonight, salvation. Tonight, the gospel of power. Tonight, healing and deliverance in your life, in Jesus' name. I got it. I have it. Recording in, in progress. Time. Father, we well, thank you. You are a God of love, a God of mercy.